Donald Trump has officially swept all seven battleground states. I swear to God, if you idiots elect that demented man. The 47th president of the United States. I'm sorry. What if I told you that your feelings towards the candidates in the 2024 US election were as genetically determined as your intelligence, your risk of developing addiction or depression, and even, according to some estimates, your weight? In 2005, a team of neuroscientists set out to determine the extent to which your political ideology were dictated by genetic forces versus environmental. Generally, we think of our political beliefs as being sculpted by our personal experiences, and this was the dominant belief for most of the 20th century. How could it not be the case that your home environment and parental upbringing dictate what you believe in life? But this team of neuroscientists had a different hypothesis and their results shocked everyone including themselves. They studied over 28,000 pairs of identical and non-identical twins across the USA and Australia. Identical twins share 100% of the same genetics, they come from the same fertilized egg while as non-identical twins only share 50%. By comparing the political attitudes between these two sets of twins, we can determine how much of the variance is determined by genetics. Political ideology was first estimated with a standardized 50 question survey on a range of issues like abortion, capitalism, women's liberation, gay rights, and immigration and the correlations between answers were charted for both sets of twins. The greater the influence that genetics has on political ideology, the stronger the correlation between the identical twins, and the greater difference between identical twins and non-identical twins. The results showed quite shockingly that genetics alone accounts for between 40 to 50% of political ideology half of the total variance. The study concluded that early shared environment like upbringing and parental influence had very little to do with your political beliefs later in life, only explaining 11% of the variance. One of the most shocking findings in these twin studies is that identical twins that are raised apart and hence experiencing completely different things will actually get more and more similar as they age. It's a completely counterintuitive result than what you might expect, and this is also the case for political ideology. So why and how can this be? How does our DNA, combinations of tiny molecules, impact our belief system decades after we're born? And why is understanding this concept so incredibly important in 2024, with levels of polarization and tribalism skyrocketing and Donald Trump winning the 2024 US election? This is the field of neuropolitics, and it's been successful in finding a very interesting brain difference between conservatives and liberals. And the first brain region in question is the amygdala. The amygdala is the brain's fear and threat detection system. Its goal is to send the first warning signal to the body and ready it for action if potentially dangerous stimuli is detected in our environment. A study in 2011 showed that conservatives tend to have larger amygdalas than liberals. A larger amygdala means you're going to send a larger fear response to a smaller stimulus. The authors noted that political orientation is associated with psychological processes for managing fear and uncertainty. Individuals with a larger amygdala are more sensitive to fear. Individuals with larger amygdala are more inclined to integrate conservative views into their belief system. These conclusions were backed up in another 2008 study, which showed that people who have a greater physiological response to fear tend to hold more conservative viewpoints. I was lucky enough to be able to speak directly to the author of this paper, Dr. Kevin Smith, on my podcast, The Giant Shoulder. So let's hear directly what he had to say. One of the things that we've done is uh, we've looked at what sort of stimuli tend to get the attention of liberals versus conservatives. And there's been, you know, some controversy over this, but at least what we found is that when you put threatening stimuli in like a, you know, you, you present people with a collage of images and some of these are threatening and some of them are not, conservatives tend to go straight to those threatening images and they just tend to spend more time compared to liberals looking at those images and that doesn't necessarily and you know and some people you know when the, the, some of this showed up in the media that how it was interpreted is we found out that conservatives were more scared than liberals or were more afraid of, of liberals and that was not what we found at all and that's not what we claimed okay. it was that uh, conservatives were more attentive to things that were potentially threatening. Right. And, you know, and maybe that's one of the things, and I mean, this is 
absolutely speculative um, because we're still trying to sort out, you know, you know what the underlying biological differences are and how they really translate into you know complex attitudes and behaviors like those surrounding uh, politics. But you know, one potential explanation is what these amygdala differences do is they just make some people more sensitive to potential threats in their environment. They favor stasis as opposed to progress as they fear any change could have some unwanted consequences. This can be seen in the current debate surrounding immigration. According to the BBC, since June 2021, 8 million illegal immigrants have crossed the US southern border with Mexico under the Biden administration, while only 2.4 million crossed under the entire Trump term. So while conservatives think that they have rationally and logically thought out all of their different viewpoints and that's why they hold them, a large determining factor in why they believe those things is the unique way in which their brain was developed, laid down by their DNA blueprint. The second brain region that helps us to understand political decision making is the anterior cingulate cortex. When we receive a flow of information from different senses that's hard to organize, it's the anterior cingulate cortex which tries to characterize them and assign value to them. Essentially, it's separate useful patterns from the noise. In cases of schizophrenia, it's this exact value appraisal system that can go pathological. It's horribly debilitating for people when they can't determine what information is worth paying attention to. But mental illness aside, it's very hard for anyone to think logically when in a highly emotional state. It's the ACC which attempts to downregulate the arousal of these emotional responses and helping us think clearly in difficult circumstances. This is cognitive control. A study in 2007 showed that people who self-declared themselves as liberal had greater activation in their anterior cingulate cortex during a standardized cognitive control test. This implies that liberals' brains are more cognitively flexible. They're better at processing conflicting information. This means they can adapt to new and evolving situations more easily than the more cognitively rigid conservatives might. This increased neural flexibility may explain why liberals embrace more progressive policies and social change than conservatives might. When conservatives took the exact same test, they showed significantly less ACC activation, suggesting that they may be less sensitive to conflicting information and less likely to adjust their behavior in the face of ambiguity. This reduced ACC activity again aligns with the rigid nature of conservative values. Order, predictability, and structure encoded all the way down on the neuronal level. These results have been replicated in study after study, and what they teach us is that we may not choose our political tribe with as much free will as we think we do. Everyone has strong biological predispositions based on how their inherited DNA has laid down their particular brains. The problem is that human brains of evolved for a very different environment than the one we find ourselves in today, where belonging to a tribe was critical to your survival. The war was scarce in resources and standing alone was guaranteed early death. And this history has deeply embedded a tendency towards tribalism in our biology. It is no longer beneficial to blindly follow a group. It's maladaptive in a number of ways. The first is that makes you overconfident in the ideas that your tribe espouses. A study even showed that simply labeling a policy as being from the Democratic Party increased agreement with Democrats. And the same can be said with conservatives, even when it was the opposite party that had proposed that idea. They switched them behind the scenes. The second reason it's maladaptive is that it makes us blind to hearing any idea from the other side, irrespective of the content of that idea. Shutting down communication between tribes, creating echo chambers where ideas are radicalized. A team from the Max Planck Center of Computational Psychiatry showed that our brain literally does not process information which is counterfactual to our belief. A group of study participants were told to make a judgment on if balls on a screen were moving left or right, and then asked how confident they were on their answer. They were also placed in a magnetoencephalography machine, or MEG, which allowed the researchers to look directly at the brain activity and see how it was processing that new information. The more confident the participant was in their initial judgment, the less their brains processed and integrated that new information. And ultimately, the less likely they were to change their minds, even when it became progressively more and more obvious that they were wrong. If people weren't confident in their initial judgment, their brains did process the new information and 
they were able to properly integrate it and change their minds. Basically, we are biologically predisposed to be completely blind to any information which is counterfactual to our tribe's belief. Our in-group identities are some of the strongest confidence judgments we make because it's how we construct our inner reality, our inner self. This means we have to work really, really hard to listen to people on the other side of the political aisle. Anyone that's ever had a debate knows how heated and emotional it can get at the drop of a hat. A quick summary of this video is that our inherited DNA plays a really important role in our developing brain, and our developed brain plays a really large role in our belief systems later in life. Knowing this should help us empathize with people in other political tribes. Next time you want to vilify the conservative that's sitting across the table, it might help to think about the biological forces which are predisposing him to think in that way. The same biological forces predisposing you to think in the way you do. And it's important to state that this does not excuse extremism, racism, or any forms of discrimination, but it should help well-meaning, genuine, politically moderate people to look past labels like conservative and liberal left and right and just have more meaningful discussions. Discussions based on empathy and understanding. We're all just big stupid apes anyway and nobody knows what they're doing. But if you do want to become a little bit less of a stupid ape, then check out my podcast with Dr. Kevin Smith and check out the Giant Shoulder Neuroscience Podcast to learn more about the brain and yourself. Thank you so much for watching.